IFCs are issued for construction. So this set of drawings are going to be issued to the contractor once the, the contract has been signed. You're watching Makoka Enterprises. Today we are going to be discussing on document format with reference to QCS 2014, section 21, part 24. Move to the table of content. We have the first part, which is the generals. We move to the scope, general requirements, document format, time scale, approval, record drawing, scale, drawing scale, scale bar, presentation of drawings, manuals, and instrumentation documentation. So the whole idea about document format, the code says, is for us to understand exactly how the different submitters of drawings are going to be done while executing um, our projects. So it's going to be able to give us a clear mind or an idea on how to manage the whole formalities as far as drawing submitters are concerned. Okay, I'll take you us back now so we get to understand the history about drawings and submitters. So we have a different set of drawings that are going to leave from Supposing that we have a contract and then um, we have a contractor that is um, getting the contract from the client. So the client is going to prepare a set of drawings which are going to be called IFC. So these IFCs are information, IFCs are issued for construction. So this set of drawings are going to be issued to the contractor once the, the contract has been signed. So these drawings are going to be issued to the contractor whereby we also have set of documents, which are the specifications, which are going to be mentioned in the contract um, clauses. So as such, the contractor is going to prepare another set of drawings out of the IFC drawings, and then referencing as well with the specification of the project. So based on that, he will prepare another set of drawings, which is going to be called a shop drawing. So these shop drawings now are going to be used in carrying out the different activities in the project. So once these activities are being carried out and we have consultants on site, whereby we need to submit an inspection so that we get approval prior to proceeding with the next phase or the next activity. So as such, once um, we have um, these activities that are done, once we are raising inspection, we have again another drawing that we are going to prepare, which will be do, we done like, with the hands, we do markup. So that is called a red line. So we we'll attach the red line alongside with the approved shop drawings, which are being uh, um, developed by the contractor. We attach alongside, submit to the consultant, get approval. And then after that phase, once we are done with the project, we have to submit another set of drawings to the client, which will be called uh, before we, we, we yeah, we, we are going to call this drawing now as we, the drawings that we are going to submit to the client for handover. This, all these different steps are very important. So while we are carrying out the different activities in the project, we get to understand exactly how all the procedures work. So the code tells us that under section 21, part 24, which is document format, is going to give us a highlight of the different procedures or the, or the formats that we are going to be using as far as document formats are concerned in execution of the project. The scope of it, this part specifies the general requirement and standards required for the compliant, the, com the compilation of paper and electronic documents. So you, you notice that while we are submitting drawings, which are the hard copies, we are going to submit as well, electronic format as well, which we are going to download probably on a CD, attach alongside with the hard copy and then submit to the consultant or probably um, for review and approval, if in that case we have to submit by the shop drawing. Related parts and sections are as follows. So we have all these different sections and parts. General requirements. Documents will be presented both electronically and on paper. 
documents from an electronic source shall, when printed, conform with conform to the requirements for docu documents presented on paper. The number of hard copy manuals shall be determined by the contract documentation. Second point, the final approved documentation shall be reprodu reproducible in the following sizes. These sizes are defined to ensure that the provided documentation can be easily read and understood. This is very important. So while we print drawings for issuing to the to the client, which is as uh, as built, these drawings should be in these different formats: A4 size. Um, we have A3 and A1. So the A1 for instrument for instrument location and plan drawings. Document format. Drawing shall be compiled in AutoCAD drawing or MicroStation DGN file format or similar approved with engineer. It's very important. Time scale. The time scale for delivery of manuals shall be as stated in the contract documentation with the final versions of the manuals being available beforehand over. Approval. During construction phase of the project, the drawing and form manuals and manual st status shall be monitored and discussed. These discussions form part of the project meetings, side meetings, and are part of the approval process. This is very important. All documents shall be approved prior to handover. So we have all the documents approved prior to handing over to the client. So supposing we are preparing uh, as bid, we have to submit to the consultant on site, get approval before that set of drawings now will be given to the client for handover. Record drawings. This specification defines the production of drawings so they are provided in the consistent way that shall make the drawings easy to use. The section refers to record drawings that relate to as built product. Documents from an electronic source. Documents from an electronic source shall, when printed, conform to the requirement for documents presented on paper. That's very important. As built. As be produced by supplier vendor shall be appropriate size, shall be of appropriate size as below. Documents from the electronic source shall, when printed, conform to the requirement of the uh, requirement for documents presented on paper. So move to the skill. So we have various skills. If we look at the tabulated table, we we'll see various skills and the various sizes of the papers. Skill bar. Presentation of drawings. So we have title bar and information panel shall contain the following information. So if you look down, we see different informations that will be contained in the drawings that will be submitted. Okay, I'll take you to the graphic. Okay, we have this drawing. I'll do a blow up so we get to understand the different, which is not limited to this, but again, it should follow this format. So for all different projects that we have, it should have this same format. We have the key plan. So the key plan is going to be um, a drawing that will present in this location. And then we highlight that particular location that the drawings, I'll give an example whereby we have different parts of drawings. Like we have part one, part two, part three, part four, or part A, part B, part C, and part D. So when we put the key plan, which is going to have all the whole total drawings we present on this key plan, there we highlight only the portion. For example, we have part A. If this drawing is only for part A, we highlight only that particular part, which is very important. The next part is going to be consultant approval. We we'll move now to drawing sub reference. We have A or one, B or two, and then moves follows. And then all this section now is going to be for approval. So if we have put A or code one, it is approved. But B or code, code two is going to be approved as noted. So approved in the first part, it, it states that we don't have any comments. For 
part B, uh, the, sec the second part, which is code B or code 2, is going to be approved as noted. In this case, it's going to be approved, but we have comments that we need to rectify and then probably submit back again to the consultant to get approval in order to have code A or code 1. Rectify all the comments and then we will we'll respond to all the comments prior to submission for approval to get code A. Code C, revise and resubmit. We have comments that we cannot proceed with the inspection. For code A, we have approval. We can proceed with the inspection with, with the installation on site. Could be we have approval, but with comments. So we can proceed with the installation. But mind that we need to resubmit to get code A. Code C or code three, if code three, we have revised and resubmit. We cannot proceed at this point. So we have to revise the drawings, submit back in order to get either code A or code B. Code D rejected. In this case, we'll say out of topic. We have engineer and the date. So once the appraisal is being done by the engineer consultant, he will put his name or signature here and then put a date. Reference drawing. We have the different reference drawings which are taken from either the IFC drawings. So we'll mention the reference drawing number. We'll put the revision and the title of the drawing, which is going to be leveled in this other section. So we have the status, drawing status, which is the previous drawing which we use as reference. Date of submittal, drawing uh, project number, which we are going to mention here, depending on the different projects. This varies with the different projects. So we have department, signature, and date. Under the department, signature, and date, which is not limited to this, we have architectural, structural, electrical, mechanical, landscape, interior design. So we are going to take or sign in each of the different portions, which will be signed by the engineer in charge for that particular department. So we have different logos for different, um, either the client name, we put the client name here, we put the logo of the client. We have the project manager consultant name, and then we put the logo. We have the supervisory consultant name, we put the logo. Architectural design name, we put the logo. And we have structural des uh, designer name, we put the logo. MEP designer name, we put the logo. Interior designer name, we put the logo. Lighting design name, we put the logo. Subcontractor name, we put the logo. If probably we have again another subcontractor, we put again their own logo. So it is not limited to this. If we have different contractors or different, um, we have different uh, uh, designers that have been involved in that project, we'll mention everything in this section. The project name is going to be highlighted here. See, if, supposing we have a project which is Makoga Enterprise Building or um, real estate. So we are going to mention that here. The drawing title we mentioned here, probably small power system, lighting control system, fire alarm system, access control system. We mentioned the description of the drawing title here. We have the drawing, we we'll reference the number here. We have the sheet number, probably it is um, part one, part two, part three, part four. We have we'll put the revision number here. For revision, it could be either revision zero, revision one, revision two. So we mentioned them here. So we have the sheet size we mentioned here, probably A4, A3, A2. We put a date, we put a scale, maybe one is to one, drawn by the person who put the signature, the guy, the person that drawn the, the uh, drew the drawing, and then checked by who you put the, the his signature, and then approved by who, and then he's going to put the signature. Basically, it's not limited to this, but these are formats that we should follow while preparing drawings. As the code says, we have these different presentation or the different panels and the different um, um, descriptions that have been mentioned as per the code. It should be found on the drawing. All text and drawings shall be black unless otherwise stated. Amendment drawings. After receipt by the clan or draft as constructed as constructed drawings contractors shall notify the client of any changes by issuing a complete draft with further revision suffix to tie to the information panel in this case now when we have deviations in drawing why we are uh, finding out from the client exactly probably we have some changes we have again another set of submitter which will be called um we will have to submit to the to the to the client to verify from the client if these changes can be done 
once we get approval from them, then we implement that in the drawing and then we revise the drawings. Each section shall clarify, indicate the status of the information in the form of amendment notes. We have manuals. So we have the different sections as it has been described. We have the introduction, technical descriptions, safety, operation information, control philosophy. So all this, this, these details should be highlighted prior to proceeding with different set of drawings. We have maintenance instructions, including, we have all these points, suppliers, drawings and records. Then we move now to instrumentation, documentation. So we have all these instrumentations, but which is, we have the first part, which is for the instrumentation, the contractor shall supply the following information as stated below. We have RTU documentations. We have the PSC documentation, which is a programmable logic controller. We have HMI documentation, which is human machine interface. SCADA documentation, which is a supervisory control and data acquisition. So this is the end of this part. So the, the, the major rule or the major uh, um, goal of this uh, documentation format as per QCS 2014 section 21 part 24 is to give us an, a highlight on how to prepare documentations, how to prepare drawings prior to submission to the client. So if we are handing over a project to the client, we need to follow the different format, the different formalities as stated by the code. It's very important. See then you're watching Makoka Enterprises.